Uh, I'm John Wilkinson, Chair of Creative Writing, and I'd like to welcome you to the first of the Emerging Writers series this academic year. In the next two quarters, we'll present the fiction and the non-fiction readings. What distinguishes these events is that the writer invited to campus is invited also to select another reader from submissions of work by University of Chicago students, graduates or undergraduates. So my first introduction this evening will be of the poet selected by Keston Sutherland. I shall say a word or two, and then Keston will say something about why he chose her work. First, though, I must thank my colleagues, Chiku Reddy, Chair of the Poetics Program, the Department of Humanities, for inviting Keston, and Annie Janish, the Administrator for Creative Writing, who's done the organizational heavy lifting. I'd also like to um, uh, let you know that there are books for sale. Um, Keston's books are for sale. Um, and also to remind you that there is both a reading and a lecture next week by Fanny Howe, which I would recommend to you very strongly. I couldn't have been more pleased when I heard that Keston had chosen Gwen Muren's work. His choice allows me to feel the privilege of introducing a poet to you rather than simply her reading, since I suspect that Gwen Muren has found herself out as a poet, whether she likes it or not. My recognition of her seriousness was quite sudden, and it remains with me as a caution about judgment of students' work. I remember thinking her writing was the work of a very smart student playing with poetry as another medium to test her intelligence. So when she produced the first page of Glitch, I was astonished. I thought it might be a fluke, a fortuitous coming together, and she would move on to another experiment. But Gwen recognized what she had done. She recognized it and believed in it absolutely, and embarked on a sustained and courageous project of writing, always ahead of her own understanding of what was emerging in this very exacting practice, and ahead of mine too. But at the same time, supporting her understanding through a sustained program of reading and research. I'm not going to describe her work, since I want to hear what Keston has to say about it. But I will mention that you'll be able to hear Gwen again at the Poetry Foundation on the 21st of January, and that Glitch will be published by the editorially impeccable Crater Press in the new year. It's uh, published by Keston and me, so it's the gold standard, I can assure you. Uh, if, you've, if you'd seen Gwen's typographical mare's nests, you would realize that Crater, which prints in letterpress, has set itself a most formidable task. Crater's beautiful chapbooks are produced in small runs and are not reprinted, so you'll need to snap one up as soon as Glitch is announced on their website. But now I hand over to Keston. Hello, everyone. Um, it was a real pleasure for me um, to be able to um, read through the um, fairly substantial wadge of submissions of uh, students' work um, and uh, to light upon um, Gwen Muren's uh, work among it and finally to select Gwen, uh, Gwen's work. I don't have a long um, comment. I have nothing prepared in the form of a, a written script to say about Gwen's work. But I'll just uh, very briefly um, communicate, if I can, um, the impression which it first produced on me when I encountered it um, in the middle of 30 or so other um, submissions, many of which also, I have to say, were really wonderful. So I did think you know, uh, for a while about uh, which of these I should pick. Um, but when I found uh, Gwen's work in front of me, I had that undeniable and uh, singular sensation of the imagination when you think suddenly and in however flickering or evanescent a shape that something you have just encountered feels unprecedented. So something was flickeringly unprecedented about the kind of pressure which this text seemed to be exerting against me as I looked at it. And then I tried to follow through the sentences and follow through the shapes of language in this text to try to figure out what it might be in them which was producing this sensation in me. And I, to my enormous gratification, discovered that I couldn't figure out what it was. Um, so um, for me at least, and perhaps I'm in, in this way um, not like everyone else or not like all people at least in my um, preferences and my taste and my judgment, uh, the works which I love best and which seem to me most inspiring and original um, are those which seem at every turn to defy whatever expectation I might be able to bring to them. And Gwen's work uh, seemed to somehow, strangely, um, 
uh, in a way that I couldn't explain to my satisfaction, seemed to do this to me. It did this at the level of the sentence, so sentences seemed to go in directions that seemed unpredictable to me. It seemed to do this too thematically. I couldn't quite get a grasp on whatever the theme was, but the theme nonetheless felt urgent, present, and sort of manifestly worth making. And it also um, occurred to me as I was reading uh, this work that I had no sense how, whatsoever how it could possibly be performed aloud in front of an audience on an occasion like this. Thank you both so much, Professor Wilkinson and Keston. Um, those were really generous introductions and very meaningful coming from two poets who I really admire. Um, and thank you, Chiku and Annie, for setting this, these really cool events up. Um, yeah, so this is from Glitch. And I shall begin. Um, resistant need now written before unmanned it. Lucy, wouldn't mean a thing, this letter, dark, and I love you more. As is, no, I do, and please times a thousand has not to my splintering. Know that. As much as possible, extend that applicant once to a renewal of perfunctory routine. Standardized, sir, of not vessel 11 15 requires center. 220,000 in US, correct? Member entire through rulemaking result. Is policy thus issued without rulemaking? Of utilized biometrics, separate effective that. Fine record will open OK to submitted not who. With today, this ignoring will proceed. Bring on director of union two additional welcome so American and recognized. International morning security 81 years ago involved close on closely with pleased HR not in person. Necessary expiration shall occur for citizens who make threat and dilute the security mandates. Run now all gate mass port entrance through biometric hot phase. TWIC delayed for time delay in million reader specifications for final while, high so provided. I, I, felt, I felt like a shame. a shame, but I didn't do anything. I felt as though, I felt like, I, felt like I, like I, I was ashamed. Toll free ID CC committee 2167 requires authorized system of areas of threat otherwise compromised to be individual, immediately individuals. Submit code vessels for designated safe deadline to secure fingerprints from component except for C discussion below. Of enrolled, activated, issued, requested, granted, requested, granted, issued 805,776 RRRR terminal. Both vessels have combined to date and deploy service members since fiscal total has not been over 111 million. Regulated grants concerning not areas of the homeland to issue other as appropriate. Guard all 809 to carry the intent if secure. Of facilities relief certain under purchase. Areas of process for processing are a requirement twice. Once to once activate the CGAA report on the one identity not possible. I felt like I was ashamed, but I, I didn't do anything. I felt like I was ashamed, but I didn't do anything. I felt like I was ashamed, but I didn't do anything. I felt like I was ashamed, but I didn't do anything. 104 port security pilot technology to deadline April 4 complete report until follow-up is published, verified, qualified, program for conducted, test contributed, breach regulated, successful, accessing completed, regulatory analysis recommended, met. I felt like I was ashamed, but I didn't do anything. I felt like I was ashamed, but I didn't do anything. I felt like... I was ashamed, but I didn't do anything. I felt like I was ashamed, but I didn't do anything. Pursuant to mourning, unfortunately failing, time after time promised reform, that fingerprint iris that readers could read, faced with substantial completion standards on the eve of, again, a joke. ID other baffles other who would keep ineffectiveness for higher yield. 
Relatively dismal terrorist glitches reveal third oversight this year. Which particular all who chain reason instituted at the port, the port, the port, asking secure, remember a sham, takes, befuddle, seek panel, rear missing sub piona. Future is one size fits all. For a maritime complex, access provides identity. Issued TWICs has two of two collect 17 collect field. Conditions in February rely of identity variations today. Insert for the completed. On iris, with iris, agreed iris. Expire October, yes, yes, second phase, be ready, name? Fed back order, unmanned control access, once to new existing October cost. I felt like I was ashamed, but I didn't, I didn't do anything. I, did, I, felt, I felt like I was, but I didn't do, I didn't do anything. I felt like, I was ashamed, but I didn't do anything. I felt like I was ashamed, but I didn't do, I felt like, but I, but I didn't do anything. I felt like, but like, I didn't, I felt like I was ashamed. I felt like I was ashamed, but I didn't do anything. I felt like I was, I felt like I was ashamed. Thrombose renal artery suggested. I have I. Quiet purse now, beautiful purse now, a quiet frost under which I skate. Do not ask me beautiful, me too self, to be needless just yet. Lucy, come home or kiss that. Do not choose to wheeler code gunmen. Aspartame will wake the hungry to their daddies who wake slow in yellow. Howling may not make you my baby, but I try and double back and watch for the evil horse. There is a dark piss scent in the airways of desperation. Mice purr in the tarted glaze for their mint cutlet. Yellow transplanted into permuted eyeball and mint gristle permediate into marrowless clavicle where the glasses man pumps on all four, fours and the fur man shrieks for his Marcielli and all the lonely cock men wander through the tar gates real slow and sphinx like many DSDNA viru that host nucleus and they don't need no riddles to transcend without the pox viruses in a B by fan a slash PhD finger in. Hollows the lone Paxton que huele como la mierda de una duquesa y struck, turgid succulent, se murió a las siete de la mañana. Obtuviste a su bisabuela la carta? Two liver babies put out their juices and slap in prosthetic nephrons for the likes of me, Lucille. What will you do for my likes? Tell me that your sagged eyes wink their good hour and that I did reveal to the nephrotites the potential of their shat out limbs. Without a taboo, we ourselves would have gotten hung up on the specifics the Tuesday before last that was so spiky with contradictions. Just forward me 10% and I swear to the Christ above, I will bleed out the bad into the canister or else never am I your Ruper. Policies reduce but cannot entirely eliminate. Crusted been weak, Lucy. New scraps don't talk, so get pulp back fingernail with vomit poured in. Basil's turn, he ouched his scum lineage to which Dusty Joe interceded in press of razored sperm defectors. He wants the major's confidence, but preeming unsuccessful, yowled and shat plump soul ends from distended hip. For I, the morning's not so bad, but fearlet shan't yet remit its tight wrap on your rupee. Guards pass me over for I, with clasped brain purse, ne'er reject the digestive blend. To become soulless, all you need is eunuch awareness. As follows. S Network citation effective. Luc pigs get ironed with xylophone. Blue rectum spume erasing tracks of waste incision. Real head spin broken flavors, and I'm the only one with meat pie. Daddy wants the bottle, and he gets only fried egg. Tried to trade me two to one, but in his wall-eyed slop, I easily needled him to paper germ wall. Played three smells for him. He shrucked out his baby's name. Axon! The pox viridae are unsegmented. He said he named her after his spat-dogged companion. After long soy hour, his drool hole was sewn up friendly with Brillo tooth. Several guards passed and rumbled their atomic relief into his eyeless face. Cannot bank on the snout, for even the tongues abide the most powerful cells for their 
yours ever, surreptitious teething, wearing their faux fur, faux Rupert, modest. Authenticated toll stop stall witness Aries. We almost always hate. I hate eyes, their scar cannot judge me, thrice pen to demonescence. Can you still your boundless so to release the spindle's depletion? I wouldst prowl the squalor hall, would it but reverse the clock of your glower, account for all that hadst been done, re swallow the urgency of my blinking. Know you the cusp gradation? Have you the jar for which I run? Need in hurry the co fortunate ten. He who is rushed over dares not flurry through, though tis his foremost desire. I, in my doings, await the toucan of our celestial, your sins forgotten under carpet, this sketch pad breast so undone by meshed lovely art erasures. Lucy, Lucy, Lucy. Oh. Saltation mediated 16 to submit for is pursed up. With lumine code, the swelling stills, not for moment, entitled Monday, whore nation hungry for impression. You approach, permuting needy marble gasp, quiet of your nevermore oppressions. Now you play the loved digit, Nusi. Also, irregularities, repositioning may at, on sig the day of your betrayal, you. Fragment. Pelvic floor fell to rot. Luxor revival not picked up. Unstable, you swolt the earth of my face, crying your hoofed badness, and me loving the thick August air, waiting for it, humping against the snow to fall upon my bone, slowly my shirt wetting as if it meant to be bad was to be eradicated. My clasp was more attic than dream then. Forwith I tight the Star Ward president for you. That you hast betrayed me is but a zoological dysfunction relegated to by the knowing hum of your blood. Designer Pollock spoken of as low ounce dilution. Have not the modem to sign. Only perspective knows. Lucy, Lucy, Lucy has started. Braille wore his spider mistress thin of her repeated, but could not finish. Her eyes closed of their interstitial fluid, lashes braided over in the smug land. We shed sebum like blankets on the felt wool press, from which I and blue raisin awake to lobotomy. Eat the truth, but don't tell it around here because daddy, too busy sucking on greased acid mantle. Uh, you never digit now. I think I and have that, uh, perhaps, but orange is me more. Fight, frighten deer hide mm, color of not deer, but never a hoof I have now, no matter indeed you cold press I. Are you still on the uh, chide? Eve of me, they shall acquit my sins tomorrow. Oh, with spigot, is S for sin, if and if he likes Jesus, and if and if, uh, and with its upshot ass fits KG like the plug rest of the US cherubs, cocks built on, salute. Beaky for you always, Rupert, perspective only. Our tit pierced, then with tights could take co. When it the drinking suck man came with his services, you aghast, wrote his more eye alight as the, hi, how are you face, not perceiving his mouth and eye. Here, tell his such religiosity, tell of my leaving wit and him, tell of a lone beautician sucked, take so pleasant a shot as I. Andy has spun his watching heart one dis two too many this time. What you am dashed trial, arrowing for the spirit to defend, but cast back. Having bent the achiest birds through razor with professed mother, return to ancient womb my contagious thumb. Even as cast iron melts, our august furnace knows the product of its heat, wills my spiritual weft not to be hard. 
The moor ring closes around your neck. His uterine collection pulls the cow, orbits with you, all regressive beasts seeking tooth. You must be stone. Have seen the dramatic bait more dry than languid. Know thou hast slurped own veins dry. So, in introducing Keston Sutherland, I feel I must perform two introductions. First, I must introduce to you this friend of many years, a poet convinced of the power of the art that early claimed him, profoundly to change people and their connectedness, a conviction true to his own experience and which he makes true for others. He's a person and a poet whose example emboldens my course whenever I'm inclined to shelter under the lee. My gratitude is great and repeatedly reconfirmed. But also I'm introducing to those unfamiliar with Keston's work, a practice that I believes, believe announces a transformation of the poetic art in English, refocusing a romantic, a Marxist, and a late modernist lineage into a force concentrated on lyric poetry as a chisel head that breaks and shapes active consciousness. Keston's poetry and critical thought brings back to use epistemological instruments and agencies that in recent times have been bypassed, displaced, disdained, or veiled queasily. I could cite as notable instances a profession of material history, of communism, of the English poetic tradition and its metrical and thinking resources, and an opening out of the self. Not a puling, self-regarding I, but what Keston has called and what his poetry shows troublingly and thrillingly as the self at full stretch. Keston's poetry compels for its grand sweep and its molecular sensitivity all at once. So even when its rhetoric is at its most extravagant and obscene and prospective, every syllable is tuned to audible precedent and radiates the energies of its past use. It is, I would claim, at this historical point, from the vantage of Keston's great recent books, Hot White Andy and the Odes to TL61P, that we can assert, for instance, that the strenuous poetry of J.H. Prynne, Keston's mentor and mine, does not rest impacted at the end of a modernist tradition, as some have, uh, but can be read as a generative antecedent of a writing which now is creating the readers for which it is asked. It is at this point that the work of poets as different as William Wordsworth and Frank O'Hara start to read otherwise, so that Keston can re convincingly reattribute to Marx the epigraph of O'Hara's In Memory of My Feelings. Such is the measure of what Keston's work in art does. As with any deep change in art's work, a long history becomes realigned according to it and brought back into bearing. Of course, such realignment also consigns to junk status volumes of professional reputation. Did we get so exercised about conceptual poetry or the winners of prizes? All that fuss disguised our unadmitted concession that poetry had become a consolatory exercise along with art's debasement as an adjunct to business or research, even medicine or the military, a little value added to lives held hostage. How improbable it seems that here and now poetry could so matter. But Keston Sutherland's poetry does change its readers, a claim which is testable, as you may confirm, by looking at the blogs that record readers' first encounters with his poems. Keston's writing and teaching have also occasioned an extraordinary flourishing of poetry in England as a medium of exchange, collaboration, debate and execration, friendship and love. The flip side of that might lead some to an excessively pumped up sense of what poetry or any art can affect as it were immediately in the political and social world beyond the enlarging circle of its readers. But the furious and beautiful power of Keston's work at maximum throttle always feels compelled by a deep pressure rather than stylistic choice, or even primarily by the conscious commitments of solidarity he makes. And it acts as a perverse tribute to the power of what it would face down. Passion must be learned back, start to end infinitely, or your life will end without you, Keston charges in his third ode. I've mentioned Keston's two most recent books of poetry, Hot White Andy and the Odes to TL61P, and you should read them both. His several books of poetry before those I have mentioned include Antifreeze and Mycosis. He's also published a book of essays titled Stupefaction, and you should read that too. 
Additionally, Keston is editing the collected prose of J.H. Prynne and editorial labor of Hercules. Keston Sutherland is professor of poetics at the University of Sussex, where his web page summarizes, I write on 20th century and contemporary poetry, Marx, the reception and translation of Marx and Marxism, Adorno, Wordsworth, Pope Beckett. I'm currently working in scholarly fashion on the poetics of Marx's critique of political economy, on the problem of how perfection may be disgusting, and on mouths. Keston is currently visiting professor at the University of California, Berkeley. To conclude, what arises and will arise from Keston's myriad activity is, to use a phrase of his own, bright abolition to a pathogenesis. Not only will apathy be halted in its tracks by his work, but tonight it will be crushed again, and a terrible and sweet ichor will exude from its corpse. <laughs> Keston Sutherland. An amazing introduction. Thank you very much, John. An amazing reading by Gwen, who uh, I think that was her first reading. Uh, unforgettable. I'm going to read two poems, um, or rather I'm going to read one poem and then one poem into which have been jammed bits of two other poems. So that it's, um, well, John uses the word corpse, that's probably kind of appropriate. This will be a zombie-like text with limbs stuffed into it and sewn onto its forehead and falling out of its coccyx. Um, the thing of which I speak is Ode to Tl61 P3, from which John briefly, uh, well, quoted one, one sentence, uh, before which I'm going to read a new poem, uh, a quiet one, which won't rise to satisfy the description which John has just given me. Um, and it's called Under the Mattress. It has a performance for ins uh, instruction for performers, which is Estatico Manon Troppo. That's how I'll try to do it. Yes, the realities of life. Yes, bound to terms like these. Tap the sexual hinge and drain its cataract of factual oil. Dreaming, you are made to hide from the guard sent for you by an anonymous communist tyrant dictating the incommunicable erotic meanings of a missing life to the deserving middle whose orderly urban sprawl and the blanket contempt could never sink lower, but merely does at will on board the massive and passive aggressive illuminous tugboat of split level grill, none of which makes much sense now or now or at any equal time like that where guards are all consumingly at large have a dream in which to evade arrest, you squeeze your whole body under a mattress laid out intuitively horizontal on which now superficially outlays overcharged and wasted an obscurely misplaced British military observer who is on standby to be presumed innocent on the ground of his readiness to fall in with reality not once but forever and ever by always more expertly fucking his girlfriend. And once having been gratefully squeezed under the mattress, which it is still being always more expertly done to her on, to excuse this strange imposition of a life directly under his peacekeeping, pounding ass, you explain, without meaning it or strangely caring, that who should remain thus at large on the tobo or free would needs risk being captured in vintage grammar, just like that, or some of something even more, and, as it turns out, to good purpose and to your profit, since he, the observer, whatever he is, why ever he is there, whatever only option you can take, whatever only option you can take, consciously permits himself to be swayed by these words, to allow you, who are, for one moment, or just about, by a minimum of perfect resemblance, his undeniable fellow stowaway in the Navy, on the destroyer of desire, and who would be a fellow stowaway in the Navy, on the destroyer of desire, by a yet greater quantity of perfect resemblance, approaching even the authentic, but for your time and again inflexible demonstrations of fluency in the chewed out pillow logicisms of barely whispered high civilian, and your knowledge of its de-escalating effects and the effects, so as, even while being non-stick all over as you are still somehow actually to bear, since there is no other immediate option, shoving your body under the mattress, curling up there, despite his manifestly not caring to discontinue his fuck on it, holding himself at breaking point where one more push will end it all. Come, all ye faithful, and once you are there, tucked in discreetly as the predicament merits between the base grid of black metal springs and the overhead white rectangle, you keep dead still. And for a reason 
you think should exist, but are not completely ready to know yet by yourself, even the whole evasively your stuffed in body does not upset this mattress or serve even to make it effectively combust or disastrously tilt or represent an unmanageable sexy lump or unsexy lump or underlying protuberance pressed down in militant unison with gravity that would thwart any wound up military man in the execution of a truly professional fuck who himself often likes to apply the word fuck. Fuck! Despite being exactly then as now exactly its actual size and shape. After puberty, you just don't grow anymore. Under the mattress, you lay your arms out crosswise on your chest. In the ear pressed down against black metal springs are later heard and condescendingly listened to many mortal intimations of a tinnitus for eels. We are slaves too, and we live with it, as the alternative is madness and misery. The guards do come twice, eventually first, then right away. And when they do come, they are seen to be looking for you but for that moment gambled on a flat percentage of its untold parallels in infinity's unpaid overtime, you are suddenly transformed into, or simply you suddenly now get at last to be, Roger Moore. Not only someone you are not, but worse, a walking wasted opportunity to find a proper object with a bit of contemporary traction. Instead, you end up not even the epitome of anything, just Roger Moore. As the mattress bulges, identity wavers back at last to him, Roger Moore, then negative fall from heaven like a shower of seminal coins. You are not some other actor you once should have been or wanted to be or were told you ought to be or could remember and list or later had it known to you without it ever really being spoken to that you must need to be or couldn't find a way up to or you just naively relied on thinking you would obviously be at some other point or whom only once in your life you could never truly care if you were or not, but were not in any case, but him, Roger fucking Moore, as he might identify himself in anger to an erstwhile fan who had forgotten his name. By now, scarcely an even vanishingly salient figure, worse than it sounds. So completely that, before you know it, you were born on the 14th of October 1927 in Stockwell, now part of the London borough of Lambeth, the only child of a cis policeman and his archaic housewife. You attended Battersea Grammar School and were evacuated to Holsworthy, Devon, during the war. You later attended the College of the Venerable Bede, but never graduated. The fit is almost wastefully exact, or else you split in two and say, untrue! What does the end of that story do at first but never mean again? Under conscious pressure, liberalised to the cognitive equivalent of light-touch community policing, your new name is spectacularly scrambled into Groom Ogre. Fuck her more. Germ, erogenous gore, me or who, her room, germaline and or, and is the substitute for a more primary Sean Connery. Himself, also more or less absolutely the utmost figure to pick. And I really do want to fuck you more hard, just as this dream dictates when you wake, each elastic thrust to bury love in no tomorrow. As Roger Moore, for pretty much the duration under the mattress. You are just slick and oily, instead of in any way primarily hard. You are more fluent in all civilians from your pigeon to your oratory, not prepared to sit back and just scream yourself sick, admittedly not directly compelling in the monotony of your plastic oversophistication, but indirectly mandatory, as the best sublimated, bright, sadistic instinct, sexy to all the wrong people, like the actual NSA. The guards cannot find you to misapprehend, so they leave. At last, this scene breaks out in scenery. We lay down together at the top of the hill in the thousands of wavering flowers, made level with all of the sky that extended so far that the fading and muting of distance on colour could openly paralyse and shine. And on the ground I held you, and in you held me together. I love you is an easy thing to say. Now you say it. Bind your life around my life insanely fucking tight. Flood our perfect darkness with our best imploded light. Since my earliest idea of you, I have been shaking. Now I want you so much that my skin is incessant, wild, electric. Identity is a death tax. Fuck the dark away. Become right. 
down in the square where none of this mess gets to matter, not being caught signifies nothing less than whatever, because you want to be caught. Secretly, you want to be caught, to be made public, to be sexually reborn, to be extracted by love from life and purified, and made disgusting again. You want to be made disgusting again. But back on board the agnostic communist destroyer of articulated grill itself, this world, where this would really have to be done, on whose only top deck the obscurely mock Asiatic tyrant is to be bloodthirstily beheld, rubber stamping in his manic, depressive, and way overdone productive waves of his being, his warrant for your arrest in a sea of best forgotten, fractionally fathomless, 57% Mexican sexual froth. Never being caught remains the indispensable alibi for loving the wrong person forever. O to TL 61P plus jammed in bits. Loss grows more absorbent as the swelling drains for good. Soft extinction beds down in a drone fit to repeat, but ripped an echo, rounded up to musical remorse. Flawless lids and wind for eyes, unsparingly not faced. Parting like a judgment with the sky, yet to come home. Agony lubricious as the delta of Niger. Life retorts a triangle, the corners flare and boil. In consequence runs out and flows away like level rain. Fuck the waxes, shaves, implants, jerking convulsions and sperm. Real sex is the insatiable silence underneath. Nothing but the rest is ever whole. Your distance isn't real. All that unreal starting again is like failing to stop. The next fat lot of untold skin deep trillions in derivatives. Beloved surfaces bed in too deep to rip you off. The corporate thugs are conniving to stifle the state to thwart its withering. The spiritual thugs are conspiring to debase all of the currencies left. Outside, the upset junkie screams to tinnitate on empty air, prorunct in odes to plenitude, not mine, but sadly, anyone's. The mind is what it is cracked up to be. The mind is what it is cracked up to be. These thoughts are not breathable. You're not ready to be breathed. The call sign, Carnage 27. Every time you blink, you carbon trade. So don't blink, spit the lids out. You look out of whatever is the technical right name for the helicopter down on the swirling monochrome dust where, in an unmistakable and completely distinct way, a man is or three men are waving his or their arms in a spectacle plainly intended as surrender. But during consultation with the military lawyer, it emerges that enemy combatants cannot surrender to aircraft. You are in a tight corner. You squeeze the trigger and look watchfully at scraps of ripped up human fucked at random into the dust. 80% and rising of Hellfire missiles in Iraq were fired after the surge. Later, but there is no later, but later it will be obviously for the best, or have been, as a single dot is, if weirdly craved there's nothing in the universe but a single dot. Is this my work? This guess I will never be done with? Not the wage labour. I do my best to ram my head, dissolve my flesh and scratch my head, suck to climax and winnow my fingernails, contract my genitals and state broadly saying in for money every day, or in truth not every day. The light of that day will slide in at the back of the window, at first on a glassy outside, but then in across intimate backs and through fronts and will evenly spread through the air, transparently retinal burn, the glimpse of renewal to token retarded despair with the sun in your eyes. Ground to splitting air, the poor should live where they can afford to, not where they are. Redistributive justice. It became a country full of torture, omnivorous ravenous gut for our riveting blood, rigid Muslim centrefolds, radical grievance pornography. There are some porn films in which the woman is only fucked in the ass for anyone who cares. What she is insinuating you employ her to project is hard to specify. If anyone is listening, you do your best to get to the truth of it. But if nobody is listening, then it seems less important to go for a truth that needs to be got to. After all, you are not showing off. You can use the old one, that what you really want is not to be the genitals fucking the ass, but to be her, to own the ass, and be entitled to withdraw it. 
or to be it, open but entitled to be withdrawn, to be passive and open and plastic and traded in light, and because, in the end, virtual exploitation is, for consenting adults like us, less toxic than real, on condition that, on principle, you do not pay for it, and since, in the end, with every increment of market deregulation, nil potent or not, the superannuated neoplatonism of that old distinction grows more and more scratchy and kitsch until, which is to say, so that its value comes back round again, so the meaning to desire is that sexual excitement about the exploitation of women in pain is less deplorable the more unironically it can be extenuated by the collection of its conceptual debt to the always already widespread commodification of vicariousness and its outstretched rims of transgression. Enron to Xbox, either in this case and in general, the more widespread, the more inviting, on top of whatever it also owes to the will to abjure the organ responsible for pain, as also in its turn for love, in this case, and in general. 1.2. Reactionaries think life should mean life. You don't believe in rehabilitation. Everyone is alone when she orgasms, caressed into an empty word. On screen, during my existence, and in the last analysis, in lieu of it, a really beautiful woman is explaining that Britain must be prepared to fight to retain Margaret Thatcher's European budget rebate. Stella! Giddy detestation of senior liquidity managers, strong aversion to strategy consultants, deep distrust at lead auditors, growing impatience with industry relations directors, spasmodic shrinking from financial modelers, rational fear of property loss adjusters, slight suspicion of corporate accountants, psychedelic distrust of branch compliance officers, agitated antipathy for growth managers, ancient nausea at contract administrators, dinky distaste for equities client service heads, labile abomination of senior enterprise application architects, melodramatic dread of heads of international payments, cute dismay over dispute consulting vice presidents, cocky chagrin at directors of pricing strategy, wholesome horror of reporting and valuations accountants, inevitable irritation with fund controllers, mawkish mortification by renewables project finance associates, happy hostility to high yield analysts, untakeable misgivings over multi-billion dollar special situation fund junior analysts, smart dislike of debt finance associates, rambunctious loathing of fertilizer traders, shitty animosity for corporate finance generalists, implacable deprecation of fund placement replacement managers, depressed estimation of equity derivative confirmation drafters, blind rage at trainee futures traders, greasy disapproval of sell-side analysts, imperative repugnance at flow rate desk strategists, sclerotic conflict over front office generalists, unschooled coolness on arbitrage traders, fussy disfavour of clearing money Margin managers, bent enmity with solution specialists, elegant spurning of heads of securities, fevered shuddering at exotic rates associates, being discombobulated by top tier attorneys, attitudinistic trashing of prime brokerage associates, involuntary flinching from algorithmic traders, iffy qualms with quant developers, instant revulsion at options data analysts, hard won hang ups about life and health actuaries. Automatic melancholy when confronted with corporate action specialists, nuclear abhorrence of continuity managers, petty incredulity at transitions coordinators, complex disaffection for performance improvement operations professionals, real hatred of transformation managers, waning displeasure at heads of decision support, discreet peak at heads of client integration, evangelical vexation at asset servicing specialists, irresponsible annoyance about transfer agency operations managers, fruitless fretfulness over distressed debt fund analysts, mealy mouthed mis out of credit sanctioners, overdue animus for debt markets writers, harrowed disbelief of credit partners, plangent repudiation of restructuring reporters, gruelling denial of structured credit surveillance analysts, necrotic mockery of assurance managers, and irremediable illness of disposition toward regulatory affairs consultants getting social housing down to the last unfuckable man. The last absolutely unfuckable man means that you don't really want the communism you say you want. For only something has to change and fast. For only something has to change and fast. You can't love everyone because you can't do all the billions of different types of love. Do the wrong one and you'll never forget it. The coinage of paedophilia is attributed by the Oxford English Dictionary to Havelock Ellis, who in his Studies in the Psychology of Sex, whose first volume begins with a study on the evolution of modesty, classified the sexual love of post-pubescent individuals for pre-pubescent individuals as an abnormality. We embraced a new ideologime. 
Since those first beginnings, in what innumerable psychoanalytical thinkers, now comfortably confined to the humanities, can now conceptualise as the pathologization of too durable infant desire, keeping up childhood for too long, our machinery of classification has been melodiously refined. Besides paedophilia, which now means the sexual love of prepubescent individuals in particular, we now have hebephilia, a diagnosis for the sexual love of individuals in the early stages of puberty, but not earlier. Ephebophilia, a diagnosis for the sexual love of individuals lately progressed out of puberty. These last two are sometimes also called chorophilia and parthenophilia. Teliophilia, a diagnosis for the sexual love of adult individuals, whom we mirror. And gerontophilia or gryophilia, a diagnosis for the sexual love of elderly individuals. These diagnoses are in turn the subdivisory disorders of chronophilia, a more general term for any limitation of sexual love to individuals living within fixed age limits. Chronophilia is in turn a paraphilia, a yet more general term, familiarly a biomedical application, that describes the misdirection of sexual love as a whole, be it into babies or non-human objects or images of suffering or corpses. It will be obvious that the history of diagnostic refinement in pathologization is at least nominally a case of clinical Hellenism. Hellenism is itself a word adapted out of its original meaning, which was the acknowledging and adoring of a multitude of gods to fit the less immoderate, immoderately orgiastic definition, Greekism in thought or speech. The criminal use of desire will be very grating in Kurdish, but all sex is barbaric. We are the pleasures we enjoy, the blisses we admire, and all sex is a text. Weenbats in a gaping slang. I adopt Hauslitz's position on the immortalitio because my mother was an alcoholic. Freud said that my early biological hermaphroditism led to my original predisposition to bisexuality, which in the course of my development was reduced to monosexuality, leaving slight remnants of the stunted sex. The idea of development truly is formidably legitimate. And yet, it is only the first of many ideas, each one more legitimate than the next. My infancy was an original predisposition to sexual love for children, which over the course of our development was reduced to sexual love for teenagers, and then, as if conclusively, to the same for adults. The elderly are terminally attractive, but I would rather not suck them. Infant love is as durable as life. If it isn't, it must be. Immortality must mean the preterition of aging, so that universal love may be comprehensive. That is, pedo hebe ephibo teliophiliac, omitting the elderly, who are ostentatiously not immortal. <laughs> the sum of all disorders is the law of paradise. You can disagree with it, but you can't disobey it. That's the bottom line. Since not a single song I made is comprehensible to you, I think I must be too bourgeois or indigent to praise you. One song that was never sung, you archived for me in the breast, unlistenable outside it, meant strictly for consolation. When as the inconvenienced heart is turned off and the world erased, it scruples on its part in peace, not squandered, but in heaven. It is a good ear and it has been licked allegedly hard, but it will not fly in payment for the annealed ultimate fragment of empty fridge or vagrant spigot to ultimately glut on later sublimed into a loss leader for whose collateral loss is implicitly infinite in installments. For in your defense, it turns out the whole kitchen is always and on purpose roughly this unsaleable. Whatever sort of incredibly weird noise it mutes in peace signs. <laughs> Lost to how I matter, ignorant of the youth of paradise, the hummingbird cell, machine guns everywhere you look, Al-Qaeda in Iraq actually using mentally handicapped persons to attack coalition forces. They use exploding women from the attic. Poetry evolves from a vivid play of nerves and confusions into sedative aporiae and mock heroic marginalese if you don't take the precautions to prevent it. Maturity is learning not to flinch at childish swipes and kicks, to know when harm is seriously meant. The really beautiful woman who is yet to explain how I should fight to retain Margaret Thatcher's rebate is now bent over into a suggestion about how to prop up the euro. I can see into her womb. It's dark in there, Deborah. Whatever I am doing now, it gets a part in there. I cannot see why else I am not here. The void is to my left and not in front of you at last. In the future, which is the front for 
too late, there will be a virtual alien where you call up everything left in the entrance. Everything I am was lit by love, but is now independently bright on account of being perceptible as it is. Social justice prevents adequate concentrations of capital. When you get older, genitals grow less interesting. Spited, the integral glass forever fades into its shattering finish, dictating erotic percussion, as love no less appears to end, but nothing can retard that turn, as fear that it will disappear like antiseptic on a burn, to speak for the rampant Polish doing our dead-end jobs in bed by dreaming of us. But the reason it's that way is what will keep it that way, to own pleasure unthinking, to live another day and kill the rest, a simmed off sky on fire, unpractised in desire to stay put. Death, please spare me over for another year. Your life depends on the favours of man. But he turned out to be a sex slave. That was how class boomed before everyone subverted the theoretical structure of it. Imagine whatever you think is affordable housing. Now imagine why anyone should get it. I'm never scared to be alone anymore. I'm never scared, but I will never give up. Just as a tragedy is something you are obliged to imagine must be capable of teaching you something, and a comedy is something you are not obliged to imagine must be capable of teaching you anything. So you are not obliged to imagine you just keep knowing this, taking it, making it up, or doing nothing, least of all, for a living. All the times you came from what I did in a row make an alternative eternal life feel possible, not a stand-up, but in fact, just as so that those now abandoned moments of joy can have a supplement in the form of cavities that you can't stop playing with, holes for your most private microvilli. The damages are temporary because they feel so forever by convincing you that they always do. What it feels like is a game, one where you get life after life. But though you go back to the beginning whenever you want and make it more auspicious by knowing what you have to do on the later levels, you never get to what the German philosopher G. W. Hegel, in a pleasingly more hyperprolactinemic connection, once called das Unwankende, a word also used in Nietzsche in connection with Apollo on the pretext of his inflexible detumescence. The same shortfall would later be the spoiled brainchild of the wife of King Yorgo of Greece in her hypnopompic pseudo-hallucination on the surgical counter-transference of her own clitoris and its ego. One of the Napoleons will do a sponsored spin in his shallow grave of scrambled dolphin egg, one-way mirrors. For every explicit dousing and caustic of the romantic subject on flexi time, you do in an uproariously automated language game, incontinent of its only concept, and contemporaneously versified, with stylishly conscious, if not on that account deliberate ineptitude, in order to be eulogized that symbolic profit as the last, last farce of the authentic middle-class subject in America, to boost property values in its most desirable urban centers, the flagging flagship flaff sounds of New York universalism, if that is what it takes to live by blunting futility. We look at each other's parts under the table, Jackie and I, hiding our eyes in the heads we come with, so as by the beautiful misidentification of excitement with fear to remain children forever, a proof of endurance that entitles us to be only now for the first time disconnected from one another anywhere on earth. I don't know who Jackie is or what she amounted to. I haven't seen her since then. She may be tied up in a Fallujah basement in nothing but a hood, toe separators, and a face dildo. But whatever she is thrilled by now, and whatever she lives in fear of, I trust, in truth, that somewhere beneath all the real objects, there still shines to her distraction the first image of the male genitals which I gave her, wrongly flickering, spitting blanks, preserved in trailing clouds, tiny and perfect the origin and corner of my love. I am also charmed with many points of the Turkish law, to our shame be it spoken, better designed and executed than ours, particularly the punishment of convicted liars. They are burnt in the forehead with a hot iron, being proved the authors of any notorious falsehood. I should go on to tell you many other parts of justice, but I must send for my midwife. If you read Marx when you're stoned, it sounds like Becky. Grace to be born and live as variously as possible. As sure as any air must spread the cost of any breathing head thrilled out to cold perfection, released from its protection to keep our estimates so rough that each can lean in close enough to bind onto the other, free and blind to her obscurity, so every paralysis condemns to cost analysis, terminable or not, the same live instrument of breath and blame. The high demand is prod the speck to check its balance on the neck, restructured not to bend or turn or lose what might be saved to earn a personal account of how, in love, 
with what it can't allow either to be or disappear, their average becomes more dear, loaded with phony fire to drown desire as the blood slows down, to last forever, missing out as mirrored in the late bailout, or ever wash away the smear of values, else in sight too clear to stare in lucid vanity, transfixed to our insanity, whose stalk is knotted on a nail of sex smashed in too deep to fail, or go for just as long as wait or last a whole life wrong, too late, but soft enough to trim the lips, no kiss too infinitely grips, since sadly being shoved away is what makes yesterday today, disproved tomorrow, shining more robust than ever on the floor, as managers are first to know, by shadowing the afterglow that blurs as irrepressible desire or inaccessible, is thrust hard at a new mock dot whose proxy for the vacant cot, assigned its pun in Elliot, is packed in silica crystals to desiccate essentials for bare minds wintering in jars of skulls bust in from empty bars, rebutting dusters in a fridge, not plugged in a dismantled bridge, but switched on at the wall and shut in protest at the power cut, impatient for pneumatic joy, since emptying that girl or boy on tips of absence getting hard to drink in yards of cooling lard, in envy of their hotter love, of all our suffering above, the hot point Silex Sinterlands, the bright spark libertarians, who lisp over the drone sublime, get high on gore and moral rhyme, and seem on ideal felonies, and bogart hash on balconies, to level all disparities, in passion only once as fuck so flashy bankers snore amuck, who split apart in bliss to ply the sexy shrapnel, satisfy the universal appetite for more orgasmic natural right, whose aspic and preservatives sustain neoconservatives, to scavenge under God in blood and liberate his wavy flood, Genuzzi UKHL5 will keep the flagging law alive, cement forever wet in dreams of Tigris disemboguing streams of bonded revenue and dust, shored up with picturesque disgust by poets mindfully concussed, the more content, the less unheard, as vision sways its best when blurred, suffice to say, and get ignored, like genitals too hard and bored, for all the time you wait and break or mend to die will only make the memory of difficult, passionate love still more occult, and tender faces disappear as lost mist leaves a mirror clear to vanish, yet permanently diminish, not so passingly as love must in a slighted head shut up in dreams, admired instead of shed like jobs to multiply the way out by the inward cry for fleecy care or finny drove or feathered youth or all my love or scaly breed, since with that shit Iraq in general must grit its icy core of heart and mind in not just spectral abstract rhyme but profit for the vested rim who mass produce this phantom limb, rip open markets in despair, mock cannibals who bite the air, rinse, spit and flush their sacred founts and whine about the body counts. I'm stretch. All three parties whip their members. Invisibility spreads up from the head into the arm and shoulder, so that the economy resembles an archaic torso whose python is thus at liberty to ingurgitate its lyre. Love is very childish, to the point of no return. There is, merely there must be, there is, in the universe, a planet identical to the one that you are on, this one, but for the solitary adjustment that the person who is you on it now, and who is already you on it when you are still here on this, and who will be you here on this when at last you are there on it, if you are, has never once agreed to indecipherably blur, not for a second there, or less, into anything that is worth being merely about you, or ever once asked if you are are here now on this are you there or what are you here on this for if you are or if you are or if why you are not then yet on that like he is and doesn't drink like you do here or smoke so many fucking drugs and for such a good reason that the mere rumor of its existence as a reason is a light whose dimmer is more natural broken that neither of you get Rummage while adrift, fixate when you get back. That's the epic of thought, recollected by memory like an apron string. TL61P sentimentally hacked into the bark with a sterilized syringe full of futures and eggshells. How do you reconcile wanting to be as big as possible with incredible anatomical limits, with the indisputable reality that you were really small in the beginning, where love was primary and not pegged to the dollar or spoiled by being a replacement, except by adamantly filling up a beloved person until it hurts rather than barely impinging on him in embarrassment like a spongy earplug rested on a cross section of mushy pea? I put Christian in my mouth under the blanket, played with him as if gargling. I didn't know what to do, so it felt better authentically childish. I had to sleep in his bed because my mother put me there as if killing our father. I couldn't hear her, I could hear her sobbing downstairs at being stood up but not listened to it. Later that night I had to have been asleep. Christian asked later that we keep it a secret once we had learned that you can do that. 
I was fine with that, though I also felt that it was somehow melancholy that such a simple act of pleasure between two people, still roughly equal at that age, should need to be made into a source of fear, when all we have to fear is other people, who could surely be imagined to come under the same blanket. I wanted everybody to get something out of my mouth. What comes from it now is this ode, bright abolition to a pathogenesis. I stare at the white screen, wanting to know what comes of it next or later. And whether I am living or dead depends on you and when you read it. It depends who you are, like tides on the moon, blood on the measured heart. Dying will not mean wasting your life, but bearing to pass for nothing. It means not waiting for life to bear in the past for nothing else. Whatever is nothing but next to come, bearing is intrinsic. You learn it inside out, then disappear, or are probably outside already. But how is outside when the different sets to bear the nothing there? The point is not to unlearn love, try to love nothing. It stops too strictly infinite. Attrition must be sung, fuck that. Each and every loss of it will mean the edge away. Mean your life, but nothing else. Love for nothing gets it true. Passion must be learned back, start to end infinitely, or your life will end without you. The ratings cut to junk, PDD, NOS ratings, try iodo, thyroline, heart shortages. It shall be you, lash naked short, a tight borrow, fire, engineering, Lehman, pre-junk, libidinous prongs, solid waste, TDO, pit six, ratings go, gloat, fit to fringe, and once more, to live and grow as one by what we never give enough of any life for, but rejoin us by refusing love to memory, your fake and spin apart, synthetic as smashed in, more readily is hard to prove, the answer is not right, needed as on the mist and single way, refusal is its own reward. My best of you who are of me and minded our eternity. Drag her off the sofa and up the stairs. I do want to hear it. I do want its reimbursement. I don't want to ignore how it also says what I don't. But you begin to know that the iron would rather be left on, acting on a blind impulse to claw back anything to fetishise, until, finally, the flow of that progress is now and then more or less imperceptibly interrupted by a bucket of sand, bunking up a work song on the bourgeois bogus fringe, your mother's tongue a prod of junk, her chin in a flying cow hat. What do you mean, as if you are beautiful? I mean, as if you never disappear. Will it equally prove nothing? I can still imagine what it would be like to see your face moving about and breathing, breaking open with laughter, a harmless shadow on your neck, taking your drugs with me, then mine, floating in the bathroom. You grow up as a flower in my head. You have a moderately big ass. You wrote pretty surrealist pornography about your love to me. I could at least pretend to be able to say anything to you and believe in what I knew was the pretense while it lasted by not credibly acknowledging it. And you could do the same for me, but now you're gone and I'm the government. But really you're just away. The music of the ice cream van is scrunching up the hill of tar. Don't be ordinarily afraid. Liberals want the state to be a way of life, but we suffered as a society from being too optimistic we thought the good times would last forever. That led to the de facto socialization of credit, rather than what I wanted at the time, and I still want now, and what I may yet definitely want forever. The planned socialization of labor, so that the payout of immiseration wound up infinitely deferred. That mistaken epic of bad socialization is the material base for the late deconstructive superstructure, a mind impressing limits, nicely warped but going flat. The rest of us, if you can believe that, are best abandoned to trade our way through clinical depression in infamous cycles on that fat roundabout with that mat. Think of the things you bring home and cram into your house and all still there. What rips apart the iron sheet to find its messy face asleep, dreaming of the Congolese reserves. But the private sector will take up the slack by genuflection of the levers of power that operate the rack, taking up the blessed string of ownership from Iraq. Unemployment will come stretching down. Marla is beautiful for being as if infinitely resourceful in a climax. You want him for a sex life. Bush gave evil a bad name. It's like you're still living in 1990 thinking you can have everything you want. Thanks.